Hello everybody, Drea here with your watch and stitch for this week. We will be working on our ghost stitch applique. Now in this tutorial, this design is stitched onto a napkin. We give you the placement and basting stitch to keep that napkin secured. But of course, you can modify that portion to fit your needs. Today we have a little bit longer hemmed piece of linen here. Uh, this is the perfect size to go maybe over the back of a chair or to feature on your desk. So it's a little longer than a napkin but we're going to place it the same way and we're going to use the exact same file so you can follow along. And if you, again, wanted to use a smaller napkin or maybe a tea towel or even putting it on any other item of clothing or other linen, we have our directions here for you. But we're gonna use this corner placement and basting stitch. So the first thing I've done here, and I'll show you my hoop, I have a piece of uh, wash away stabilizer. You can use any brand of water soluble we're choosing to use that because again, this is a napkin or a piece of fabric that we'll be using the front and back. We don't wanna to have to pull any stabilizer out of this project. We don't want that crinkly tear away. So we're going to use a wash away or water soluble stabilizer. Thread wise, these first two steps absolutely do not matter in color. I have black thread loaded up just so you can see what I'm doing. But again, just like the tutorial reminds you, first couple steps don't matter thread wise. So now that we've got you joining us, make sure you tell us you're watching, say hello, type a comment in, maybe just a little wave. We do have some lovely folks here as always behind the scenes that are ready to answer your questions. But now that we've gotten some folks here, let's get started stitching. I have my design loaded and you'll see if you're looking in your tutorial, I'm stitching out the same design that we have the photo steps here for. So this one with the beautiful heart, I'm gonna go ahead, I have my design loaded, and I'll be running my first machine step. This first step, as you know, is just the placement stitch. So I'm not doing anything yet. I just have my stabilizer hooped, and I'm running my first step to show me where to put everything. Again, color does not matter for this step. Nice and simple. So what we have here is our placement stitch. It just ran that one time, so you can see where everything will go. Now I'm going to align with this shape here, the corner of my napkin or my linen that I'm placing. For this particular uh, piece of linen, this napkin I have here, it has, I'm not sure if you can totally see, but there's a little hem on the back. So what I like to do to keep things easy, I like to align wherever that hem edge is your hem might be on the back or on the front, depending on your item. I like to align the edge with the edge of this stitch. Now in the tutorial, we use spray adhesive. I'm gonna use tape to make things a little easier. Once you've aligned your napkin or other object, you want to make sure that everything is nice and straight. So my hem is a little further over on the inside. You can see it here. I'm aligning the edge of that hem with this edge. Now what I'm gonna do, is tape it down. So if you're like us here in studio, we hemmed our own napkin. So it's also on actual linen. So you wanna make sure if you're like us and you have a lighter fabric that it's pulled straight. You can see mine's trying to wiggle. So I wanna make sure it's pulled straight and taped. It might be easier for you to do this. Take your hoop out of the machine. Don't be afraid to pick it up if you need to. So. This step might seem tedious, but it's nice and easy. You want to make sure you get everything lined up straight. And I'm using a little more tape than I need just because this is a live stitch out and I don't want to tempt fate. So we're making sure everything's nice and lined up and we're taping or you can use spray adhesive. All right, Whew. that was work. Now my next step is a basting stitch. This is so you don't have to rely on your tape or your spray adhesive. The basting stitch is gonna come along in here. I'm gonna go ahead and run that in the same thread. This color does not matter and it will be removed at the end. It's just to keep things in place. Uh-oh, look at that. It tried to remove itself, that's okay. Let's go back and make sure it catches. Wouldn't be a live sewing experience if everything was perfect. 
All right. Let me double check my bobbin and make sure he's good down here. Looks good. Anytime you have a stitch that doesn't want to pick up, you want to just double check your bobbin and make sure everything is in securely, just to make sure. I always like to take it out and replace, which we did do before we started, but you know, safety first. Reloading the hoop, I'm going to make absolutely sure that everything is where I placed it. And then I did run my machine back to start the step over. Now let's get that basting stitch going. There we go, now it's catching. You can see this basting stitch is a little wider. These are big open stitches, so they can be removed later. It's not going to run uh, more than once. Again, it's this big open stitch, and it's just to hold your fabric in place. If yours is longer like mine, you might wanna fold it up or pin it. I'm just gonna keep an eye on it while we stitch. The next thing we have is our decorative steps. So I'm going to change my thread to a color that I want for my leaves. I think I'll pick a green. So while I am changing out this thread, I wanna make sure you're interacting with us. Make sure you tell us hello in the comments and make sure you also tell us, tell us what you're working on. We wanna know what projects you're working on. Give us your, I need a good design pick of the week here. What are you all working on? I'll have somebody checking out these comments to see what we have going. Oh my. My threader is not threading. Here we go, let's try one more time. There we go. Now my green's threaded. We're gonna run this. What projects are we working on? Let's check these comments. Oh, have people saying hello. While my leaves are stitching, I'm gonna read and see what you all have been saying. Let's see. Love when we can laugh at ourselves. Almost missed it. Oh, the beautiful thing about watch and stitch is that if you didn't get the very beginning, you can 100% tune in later. You can watch it over and over. We wanna make sure that you all have access to it. Let's see. Hello, Drea. Hi, Linda. Good morning. Oh, we have people all over the country. That makes me happy. Yay, people. Oh, oops, somebody in the UK. Good evening. Hello. We love hearing you joining us from all over. Again, make sure you're telling us hello so we know you're watching. If you have any questions while this is stitching out, you know we have some lovely folks here that are ready to answer those. And then I also have a few things up my sleeve. So this section is decorative. This is probably the longest portion. So I have a couple of things I'd love to show you all while I answer these questions. Let's see. Freestanding bookmarks. Some people are working on gnomes as garden flags. Fabulous. All kinds of goodies. Someone asked how you get this design. I can tell you that. So this is part of our watch and stitch collection for May. Our watch and stitch programs are a set of designs that are intended to be education. So they are we stitch. You can watch and you can stitch with us and learn some techniques. There are a special set of designs each and every month. We've been doing these for the past couple of months. And the designs and the directions all come in a beautiful booklet that have all the information you need in Buddha. So while the stitches, I'd love to show you some other goodies that I have here. I don't want you to get too, too sleepy watching it stitch. I have, of course, our fantabulous flash sale. Yes, that's a word today. So this collection is seasonal pot holders. I have just a couple samples from it. These are an older collection. So they are a little project and there are uh, two beautiful designs. So inside the pocket, the back, uh, the pocket itself. So a couple of designs for each collection, each one within the collection. You'll see they all have the two designs. They have the beautiful free motion on the back, ignore our tag, with the beautiful free motion on the back. It goes all the way down inside the pocket. And then the pocket has these beautiful applique and there's some folded fabric. There's several techniques in these. Now, seasonal pot holders were never included in all access. This is an oldie, but a goodie. So this collection was pre all access. They are adorable little round shaped pot holders and they are on sale for half off right now. So you have a limited amount of time to get these half off. It is a great, great deal. This is probably my favorite three. So you have one that has mom, 
you have a Thanksgiving or a fall themed, and then you have one that is very patriotic or 4th of July. So there are quite a few others in this collection. Half off, limited time for your flash sale. Seasonal pot holders. I wanted to show you that. Now, this is still stitching. It has some more decorative items in it, but I wanted to tell you a little bit more about this watch and stitch. I know some of you are here and you're like, we've heard this, but some of you aren't quite sure about it. So everything you need, I printed mine out, but everything you need to make the included designs is included in your little watch and stitch booklet. So it might seem small, but it is mighty. It is full of techniques and tips and tricks, step-by-step -step designs, and then it also has your machine steps. So you have all the equipment you need to complete your designs. And then you have this bonus. Every week you have an educator like myself. We come on and we stitch one of these designs with you so you can experience it firsthand. And just like in the beginning, you'll see that we have normal things that happen here in the studio too. So don't be so hard on yourself. Have some fun stitching out these watch and stitch collections. Every Tuesday, uh, for us, we're Eastern time, so 1.30 p.m., but you can watch it anytime you want. They are replayable. So we love, love, love to have you all um, visit with us here. Virtually is good, right? We love virtual visits. So we're stitching out some things. Do we have any questions in the house? You were quiet today. Ah, see, somebody's getting ahead of me. So the title of this design is Ghost Stitch. When we get to the part of the Ghost Stitch, I'll explain it to you a little further. But I think I can show you in this picture if you want it on the sneak view here. So where I've printed out my tutorial, you can see this lovely photo here has some applique. I know the detail isn't there, but you're gonna see it all full color in just a moment. The ghost stitch is a lot like if you ever had maybe growing up a friend or maybe it was you who when you colored in a coloring book, they would outline the shape before they colored it. I had a cousin who did that and I always thought it was so different. If it was a balloon, she would color around the inside and make a, a dark outline and then she would color it. That's kind of like ghost stitch. So the ghost stitch on this heart applique is this kind of inner satin, if you will. It's your, your stitching that's touching your applique. So it's meant to be an extra accent, some dimension, and kind of a pop of color. Then there's this other satin stitch. It's a little smaller on this design that comes right up against the outside of that one. So it varies in our design. Sometimes the ghost stitch has two larger satins, and then sometimes it has a larger and a smaller, but the ghost stitch is always the one touching the applique, the innermost. It's designed to match your applique, to blend in. So I'll show you what we're gonna use here for ours. I have this beautiful burgundy grunge applique fabric that I'm gonna be using in just a little bit to do our heart. And then I have a color that closely matches it um, here. I just pulled something that looks Closest to the fabric, this is what I'll be using for the ghost stitch. You wouldn't want to use, I have what we call a non-example here, you wouldn't want to use something that coordinates or contrasts with it for the ghost stitch because that really kind of changes the effect. So let's see what we have next. We have some beautiful embroidered flowers coming up. I've got my leaves. Now I'm going to get my flowers. So let's change our colors so we don't have green flowers. And while this is stitching, you already know it's about to happen. I'm gonna go ahead and get this situated, but if you would like to win one of our gift card prizes today, go ahead and type in the word flower. Flower is your word to try and win a prize. It'll be a gift card, so I know you're excited about that. Type in the word flower. We'll give you a couple of moments to see if you can be the winner, and then we'll pull someone at random to win. So if you are again wondering, what is Drea doing? How did she know what to do next? I'm following my numbered machine steps that correspond with what my machine has pulled up on the screen. These are some embroidered accents you can see coming in to fill in this beautiful design. This is why it's always important to follow your tutorial. Sometimes like here, you'll have the embroidered accents first and then you'll have some applique. So always follow those directions to know what to put where. We have some flowers blooming here on our lives. Oh, look at this. Oh, all these comments. All right, let's see who our winner is going to be. We will select someone at random. See who our winner is. Do we have one? 
Oh, Linda, Miss Linda Faust, it's you. You're the winner today. Congratulations. Our first winner, you can give us an email, customer experience at Anita-GoodDesign. We've got it popped up on the screen down here. Give us an email and you're in luck. This one has a good bit of stitching, so I am quite sure there'll be at least one more prize coming for you today. Hang tight. I always tell people at my live events, be happy for your new friend. You might be next. This is the cutest design. If you're wondering, again, where we found this napkin, we made it out of some linen. Just give it a hem on a couple of sides. That way you can customize whatever you prefer, color-wise and texture. You absolutely do not have to put this on a napkin. If you wanted to stitch it out on an item of clothing or any other textile or item, just skip that first little step that shows you the placement and the basting. Or you could run those, they won't hurt anything. So a couple more flowers. Oh, a question. Yes, ma'am. Interesting. Someone asked how we keep applique fabric from fraying with a ghost stitch. Well, my favorite thing to do, and I actually have a great example of it here, this fabric is just a standard cotton. Anything that we're concerned about fraying or edges, we go ahead and add on some fusible backing. So this is a particular uh, brand here. This is some Pellon Shape Flex. You can use any other brand. This is just one we happen to like in-house. It is fusible, so it's an iron-on. We put it on the back of our fabric before we use it. And you can see this is just cotton, but see how sturdy and, and good that is? It's not stiff, but it gives it substance. And you can see the edges are nice and clean. That's a great way to keep fraying from happening. I have another thread change here for some more flowers. I'm gonna add in little pops of yellow this time. extra color and dimension in our design. Any other questions out there? Don't be shy. You have several Anita folk at your disposal. We want to talk to you while we stitch. This design is super, super cute. Nobody else? Ugh, stop being quiet. You got to talk to me. We are... Just adding in some beautiful, beautiful color here. This design is a mixture of techniques. This portion is just beautiful embroidery. And we have it turned up nice and fast. There'll be some more flowers coming in. I do want to show you, now there is this beautiful sale going on. If you've seen it on our website, we have a summertime sale happening. It has, uh, I believe it's 40% off some summertime things. Um, this shirt, now I just came back from Florida on an event, so if you're one of my Florida folks, hello! And if you are from anywhere else in the country as well, you can bring summer to you. This is one of our You Can't Miss It designs, which I absolutely love. Um, this is, now I have another one tucked in, so I don't look at that yet. This is a beautiful collection that has perfect pockets. So we took this fun and festive t-shirt. We made these embroidered pockets and you can 100% add your collection, your design on here. Um, this is another one, he's not attached to anything, but it is way too cute for me not to show you. It says, just chill. So you can see here, it is a freestanding pocket. They can be finished front and back, so um, they're nice and soft, but they are sturdy. You can absolutely put these on pretty much anything you want to. There is an additional size too, so you can use this collection, make two pockets put them back to back and you could even make a little purse for someone um, small or a little notions holder but this is one of the collections perfect pockets that is in our flash sale um, check it out on our website you're getting 40% off this and then don't forget I showed you already seasonal pot holders it's half off this week too so there are a ton of items on sale please look at all those things let me get my flower centers going I have another thread change we want to make this project beautiful so we are stitching all the colors I think though from stitching and embroidering and getting through all types of projects one of my favorite things is to add in 
color into a project, you can really get a great result by adding a little color and dimension. So these two dots that I'm stitching now are just the centers for these beautiful yellow flowers. Here they come, question time. Oh, did they get lost in all the prizes? All right, Ms. Brooke, what do we have? Um, somebody is asking if these are hard to line up as in your napkin. Oh, the napkin. So the question was, are these hard to line up? Well, if you missed step one, I'll tell you what we had. We had a placement stitch. So if I'm taking, pretend, you know, this is my napkin on the edge here. I have my placement stitch, so I align my napkin in that. And this stitch that you're seeing here is just a basting stitch. So that stitch might look weird, but it's just to keep my napkin flat. It's coming out. So these are absolutely super simple to line up. In fact, there's really no way to mess them up because you have that placement and you have that basting stitch. Worst case scenario, if you don't line it up exactly perfectly, no one's gonna know. So I have my embroidery here and it's really quite cute, but my next step is my placement stitch. So I'm gonna leave this black thread in so you can see it. This is gonna do the placement stitch for the heart applique. As most of you know, our placement stitch will run one time just to show you where to put your applique fabric. So let's get that. Again, this color does not matter. So I just kept with the black I had. Get my fabric situated here. So you can see this placement stitch here just went around one time. I'm now gonna take my applique fabric and I wanna show you a little closer. We put that backing, that fusible um, iron on onto the back to stabilize this fabric. You can see it's nice and smooth here, but you don't have to do that. We did. We also overcut a little bit just to be on the safe side. So all I need to do now is take my applique fabric and cover the entirety of this placement stitch. So I'm gonna cover that up, ta-da! And then run my next machine step, which is my tacking stitch. That will run two times to make sure everything is nice and secure. And if you're seeing some variation, this is a grunge fabric, so it does have a little bit of a print on it. Very subtle. It goes that second time around. Look how pretty. All right, we're in here now. We're tacked. And then the next thing I will do is take my lovely double curve applique. Those are my favorite scissors. And I'm gonna trim everything directly up to these stitches. I don't want to leave any fabric hanging out because that might be seen later. So I'm going to trim this for my sanity. I'm going to take this hoop out and then I'll show you a couple of times as I'm trimming, but I cannot cut in, in the machine. So I'm taking my double curve scissors. I like this shape because they're easier for me to use. And then I'm going to cut right up to these tacking stitches and I'll show you as soon as I'm done. So you can see, I know it's a little unconventional, but see there's no fraying here because of that fusible iron on backing. There's maybe a teeny tiny bit, but it didn't really fray like cotton tends to do. I'm gonna keep cutting here. Good sharp scissors and good backing. Keep you sane. Once I've trimmed, I always like to go back and double check and make sure there's nothing farther along than I want it to be. And then any little stray pieces I like to remove. Now remember our tacking stitch goes around two times. That way everything's nice and secure. If you happen to pop a stitch, not the end of the world, but you wanna get as close as you can. Don't be afraid to turn your hoop. I like to leave mine flat but don't be afraid to turn your hoop for better access. Always like to take my time trimming applique so my end result is what I'm hoping for. Now I'll come a little closer so you can see. Have my applique trimmed. Everything is nice and tight up to these tacking stitches. So nice and tight here. Again, up to the tacking stitches on all sides. Always do kind of a visual check before you put your hoop back in. 
That way you can make sure everything is trimmed. And if you have the tiniest bit of fray, it shouldn't be too bad, but you wanna make sure there's not much. I am reinserting my hoop. Anytime you have something like this napkin hooped, you wanna make sure, even though it's taped, you wanna make sure everything is nice and flat when you return it. Now my next step, my next machine step is my ghost stitch. That's indicated in the tutorial. So you wanna make sure that the ghost stitch matches your applique. So I'm grabbing the color closest to my applique fabric. And I'm going to go ahead and thread that. Remember your ghost stitch is indicated in the tutorial, so you don't need to guess. Go ahead and thread that. And then this is a satin that'll be running for just a moment. All right, so we're running our ghost stitch. For your ghost stitch on some designs, you'll have that doubled up satin that I spoke about. Don't be alarmed if on some of our ghost stitch collections, it doesn't do a complete cover of your applique. For this example, it does come right up to those edges, but on some ghost stitch collections, you'll notice there seems to be a gap. That's because that outlining is a little wider. For the napkin here that we're working on, it doesn't have a big gap, but you'll see there's a little room around. The satin is kind of interior to the fabric instead of pushed over like some of our typical outlines. So this looks like a great match here. It's gonna go around, again, all edges of your applique. The ghost stitch is just meant to be kind of a highlight. If you can see that as it's stitching, you'll know that it is just designed to be kind of a highlight, a little accent. You wouldn't wanna pick a color that, you know, doesn't match, that's really not what you're after. Something like that would be distracting. So you wanna, like you see in this beautiful fabric and uh, thread match here, you want it to be tonal and close in shade. So while this is stitching, you know what time it is, right? It's prize time again. Since this is gonna take just a moment, I feel like I should reward your patience by doing another gift card giveaway. So if you are ready to win, type in the word ghost for ghost stitch. Type in ghost and you will hopefully win our next gift card. Let's see who it'll be. Type in ghost. Hopefully I'll see some ghosts popping up. Not sure that I've said that before. <laughs> Look how cute. This is turning out great. Let's see. Oh, here they come. People are saying they like it. Oh, ghosts. Here they come. Awesome, awesome. We'll pick someone at random here. I'll give you just a moment to type in. I know some of you are faster than others at typing. That's okay. I'm hoping you're stitching and typing, so. Right, my ghost stitch is ready. Okay. Who's our winner? Um, Deanne Kerr. Deanne Kerr? Jean. 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 Jean Kerr? Jean. Jean. I'm listening from across the room. If that sounds like you, <laughs> you're the winner. <laughs> Go ahead and give us an email at customer experience at Anita Dash Good Design. We're popping your name up or your address up down here. I've got my ghost stitch. I'm watching my machine tutorial here, and it's telling me my next step is this beautiful heart in the center. So I'm going to grab a new color for that and add some accent stitching. This is the interior heart, just some decorative stitching. Congratulations to both of our winners so far. If you didn't win yet, you never know. You never know. Day's not over. All right, we have a couple more steps, not many. I believe there's only one more stitching step on this beautiful design. This is adding in an accent on the inside. So super cute. Look at it go. I love, love watching an embroider and seeing it do this fill stitching. So this is some underlay. If you're wondering what is that doing? Why does it look so strange? That is a little bit of underlay that is traveling along to make sure your design is nice and secure. So as everything here at Anita Good Design, all this is hand digitized. 
So our digitizing team takes great care to make sure that all those underlay stitches and all the stitching on top are nice and smooth and gives you the coverage you're looking for without getting dense. So look how pretty that's coming out. Even putting a light color on top of a dark applique, that looks beautiful. Someone's Once, asking what kind of machine you're using. Ah, someone's asking me what kind of machine we're using. We are on a home machine single needle. This particular machine is a baby lock machine. Um, we use all the brands and all the machines you can imagine in-house here. This is just the one I'm on today. We like single and multi-needles. We love all brands and all types of machines. But this one happens to be a baby lock. And we have it turned up nice and fast. I know some of you like to run your machines fast. Some don't. That's okay. We're rocking and rolling. If you're not familiar, every design that we create here at You Need a Good Design does come with all the machine types. File formats are always included in every tutorial and every design. So it doesn't matter what kind of machine you have, your files are in there too. Look how pretty that is. I'm going to turn this one little guy before it drives me crazy. That is super pretty. Now we have one machine step left. I'm going to change back to my dark color for this outlining step. The outline portion of the heart, the exterior and interior outline, if you will, are going to be black this time. So they pop on screen. I am super, super excited about how this is turning out. If my threader will cooperate. Let's try that again. Someone was asking how we found out about the specials that we just mentioned earlier. Oh, someone is asking for more information. Good question. On the website. How you can find out more information about the special items and items that are on sale. If you go to anitagooddesign.com, on the very first page, right when you get there, you'll see a little scrolling bar that has different pictures of sale items. And we've dropped some links in this video as well. So you can follow our links or you can go straight to our website and find the sale items there. So we're gonna run our last machine step. That's our outlining. It's gonna outline this interior cream color and it's gonna go around our heart in general. So a little bit of a travel first and then it'll come back and outline. This outline is actually a very small little skinny satin stitch. So it's gonna add in a little extra pizzazz to our design here. Oh, it's looking good. So when it starts out, you'll see it just does a quick travel and then it comes back and does a slightly wider satin. So make sure you give your design time to shine. So Drea, somebody's asking how big the napkin is you're using. Someone asked how big the napkin is I'm using. That's a great question. I'm gonna be honest. In our tutorial, we say about a 13 by 13, which is kind of a standard napkin. This piece is a longer piece of linen. We hand hemmed it in house. We are using it to kind of overlay on a desk. So we made it a little bit longer. You can stitch it on absolutely any size item you wanted to. And if you wanted to do this on the opposite corner, I'll probably do it on another corner as well when I'm finished. You can simply rotate your design in your machine and that placement stitch, that L shape will rotate with you and then you can easily use your design on the opposite corner. So very simple technique there. This one's a little bit longer. I'll take it off. Uh, once we unhoop, I'll show you how long it is and what I intend on doing with it. You'll find this in my office after we're done. Here. So now that it has done the outline of this interior portion, it's gonna continue. I'm gonna let it do its thing on the outside of this whole heart design. If you have any other questions, there's still time. We have a couple of moments left while we are wrapping up. Now I do wanna make sure that you know in the event that we missed your question today, we didn't mean to, please make sure that you ask it anyway and we will be around for a few to try and catch up with you. Look how pretty, this looks so good. I'm loving these colors together. They're a little more muted than what we use in the booklet, but we wanted to change it up just a smidge so you can see something a little different. Uh, these colors are nice and simple. 
This is a great scrap project too. You know, the little piece of applique I had wasn't very large. So if you have an, a scrap of something pretty laying around, it would make a great ghost stitch applique. I could see this on a shirt too. Maybe a, a lower portion of a, a shirt embroidered. Again, if you didn't want to put it on a towel or a napkin, you would just not use those first two steps and just treat it like any other applique and embroidery design. So we are around this home stretch here with this beautiful, beautiful ghost stitch design. Again, if you're unsure about the ghost stitch, you have your applique, you have your satin that is on the inside instead of being an outline, kind of like this is. Your ghost stitch is this uh, stitch that is closest and touching your applique. It's meant to be an accent and give some emphasis to your fabric, which is why we matched it as closely as we could. Oh, look at that. Be beautiful. Now there's just a couple of things left to finish up the design here. We don't want to leave it in the hoop forever. So now that it's finished stitching, I'm going to show you a couple more things and I know I have some other questions, so I'll make sure we answer those as well. All right, we have our design. It is gorgeous, it is finished, but oh, we don't want it to stay like this forever. So we're gonna remove our tape. It's trying to remove itself anyway. Gonna remove our tape, easy. Save that for the next project. Now, remember that basting stitch that we talked about? This weird black L-shaped stitch here, that's temporary, in case you tuned in late. This is a basting stitch, so we're gonna take that out. Some people like to remove it from the back, some remove it from the front. Whichever way you like to remove it, just do it carefully. We're going to take out this basting stitch. Now it should be very easy. This is linen, so this makes me a little nervous. But it should be very easy to pull out this basting stitch with either your scissors or a seam ripper. So once you have your basting stitch out, I just clip the end and then I can remove it from the stabilizer nice and easy. So I'm going to remove it this way. Remember the only thing that is attaching that basting stitch is just very, very thin. So you should be able to get it out nice and simply. So I'm going through and kind of cutting it from under. You can remove it whatever way is easiest. Don't forget though that because you're stitching on to wash away, you are gonna have your embroidery that's still somewhat attached. So don't let that stress you out. All right, I have my basting stitch pretty well out from the bobbin portion at least. And then you can see from the front that these stitches just come out super easily. So only the basting stitch is what I'm removing here. Don't get carried away. So now that that basting stitch is all gone, except for one little piece, you can truly see the design without any what I call interference. And you can see that I have this beautiful design on the edge of my napkin, but the placement isn't it's no big deal, right? It isn't crucial that it's exactly on the end. You just don't want to embroider over that hem. So what you'll have now, you can take your design. Of course, you can unhoop it. This is a nice tight hoop. You always want to make sure everything's hooped as tightly as possible. Get my hoop out of the way. Now what I would do is trim off this extra stabilizer. And obviously, I'm not going to wash it out on screen. But I'm going to trim off as much stabilizer as possible. I don't know why I'm holding my scissors weird. And then I'm gonna take this design and I'm gonna go rinse it out. So if you are a stabilizer saver, keep that excess. You can take all this off. You wanna cut off as much as you can. Now, don't worry when you see that placement stitch kind of coming off. Remember that placement stitch isn't attached to anything. So that's okay, you don't need that guy. All you need is this pretty heart piece. So I've taken off as much excess as possible you can now see what it'll look like once it's rinsed out. I will simply take this design and you can uh, put it into a, a bowl of warm water. You can rinse it under your sink, whatever your preference is. Um, get all that extra stabilizer out and then let it dry flat. Some people like to iron it first, but I always like to make sure it dries flat. If you dry it in a ball, it's just like a shirt. It's going to dry that way. So now you will have a beautiful corner design. So you can see this piece is a little longer. We've done it so it can be draped over something, but you could do it on a shorter napkin, a towel, or even on an item of clothing. So now you can see the ghost stitch. It's a beautiful accent to your fabric. It's kind of a double outline, so it has that extra emphasis. We did it. We have a successful watch and stitch.
As always, it's been a pleasure having you here. And I thank you for joining in and chatting with us. Make sure that you like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Watch our videos, like them, leave comments. We always, always, always want to hear from you. Don't forget we're on Facebook, we're on Instagram. We're everywhere and we know you are too. So please interact with us. Share this with your friends. Don't forget our sales we talked about. And you know we'll have another Watch and Stitch next week. Same time, same place. You'll have a new educator. We'll show you a great new project. We can't wait to see you there. Happy stitching.